so much. That song is written by the great Ola Bell Reed, and uh, she is uh, from North Carolina. She's written so many uh, tunes that have become standards within the folk and country and bluegrass world. So um, I can also relate to the words to that song, every single one of them. <laughs> so here's another one for you. February 9th, and uh, we're very excited. It features this band exactly with just a few guests, and um, this next tune is going to be on that album, um, and it's called Crying and Singing.
introduce you to the gal playing the fiddle and singing. She comes from the other side of the, of the country, the other coast. Please make welcome Ellie Hawkinson. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be on this side of the country. <laughs> um, I'm going to sing a, a Hazel Dickens song for you guys. She's one of my favorite songwriters of all time. Um, and this is a song about being fed up with a bad relationship and deciding you're not going to take it anymore. And you're sort of just sending it all back his way. It's called Scraps from Your Table. <laughs> Northeastern West Virginia is basically just south of Western Maryland and west of Northern Virginia. <laughs> so, I want to spend some time Googling that, of course, when you get back to wherever there might be sig signal. So. <laughs> but I um, talk about that because, uh, of course, this band is named Alligator because it was you know, the right choice for me. Uh, this direction of this band is uh, a bit about my the roots uh, that I grew up playing bluegrass and wanted to uh, speak to that. And this next song is one I wrote a few years ago before this band existed. Um, it's on that 
re record that, uh, uh, that he showed you, uh, Royal Traveler. And um, it's a song I wrote about, basically about coming of age, but I had, of course, in mind my, from my personal uh, experience of growing up in that small, very rural, very, very rural, pretty economically depressed area of uh, Short Gap, West Virginia, and watching um, the adults in my family and my, my siblings and stuff make choices about going out into the world to find maybe a better opportunity, or some of them making choices to stick it out and see what they could find there in that part of the world. Of course, both choices come with cost, as you know. So this is one called Allegheny Town. Behind the two bit mom and pop, a mellow cup and royal crown, spending time that ain't worth much in this Allegheny Town.
so much, the person who wrote that tune. Please make welcome Tristan Scroggins. How many of you all are hearing bluegrass for the first time tonight? on the new record and we had the great pleasure of having a, a couple of special guests. One was uh, Dudley Connell singing uh, on this tune. We thought he was a uh, perfect voice to, to add to it. And uh, we also had uh, Michael Cleveland playing oh. fiddle with Ellie. So there's twin fiddles on this one as well. You have to imagine. He's oh. not here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we were like, and coming up from the back? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, 
we'll, we'll slow things down a little bit. And, uh, this is a song that I wrote with um, the great Tim Stafford. Um, and uh, um, we sat down one day and I started uh, talking about the uh, nostalgic memories of me growing up in, uh, and riding around in the tumbling around the back seat of my folks. Uh, 1967 Chevy station wagon Impala. Anybody remember that car? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had one for years and uh, it was our family car. There was six of us and um, so it served us well until until all the, the uh, my older siblings you know grew up and sort of went away and so my dad uh, basically t uh, cut the car in half turned it into a saw <laughs> to cut firewood with. How do you cut it in half if you didn't have the saw yet, Missy? <laughs> Check me. <laughs> well, he, he, he tech, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I just remember the, the saw. And he actually just cut the, the, the body off. The chassis was still there. So he could literally drive it to wherever he was going to cut the wood. I mean, completely illegally, of course. But, you know, those on the roads in, in Mineral County, West Virginia, no one cared. And so um, then he would uh, bring the wood back. Yeah, I don't know how he did that. It's like those scissors that come all packaged in plastic and you need to cut them out of the packaging, <laughs> but you can't because you don't have any scissors. <laughs> That's, good. That's exactly what it was like. But um, anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> my dad was, um, he, he was a laborer and he, he built, Tires for Kelly Springfield, and uh, my whole life he worked cat eye shift. And cat eye was 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. I guess it still is. And uh, um, so I was used to that sort of turned upside down thing. My mom would be like, you know, doing stuff in the you know 3 a.m. vacuuming and baking and things. And I was supposed to be in bed, but you know how can I? What in the world's going on there? But so it, it kind of also it, uh, trickled into how we traveled. So uh, they would travel. Um, we would go off for these little weekend trips. They never go very far, but they took me to to uh, a lot of wax museums. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone in Virginia, Maryland, uh, DC, Pennsylvania. Did they have different people in them? Probably. <laughs> but no, I feel like I've seen Abraham Lincoln in wax like maybe 14 times. <laughs> but um, so. A lot of lots of wax museums, uh, caverns and caves, yeah. and um, battlefields, and all of these things. My parents thought were very educational, so we did that. And um, later, not very long after that, they were we were doing the same thing, but they were taking me to bluegrass festivals, and that's how I got here. But uh, those early days, so we we traveled around. We and the, but the thing was because of the whole night schedule, I guess that they, they kind of lived on. They wanted to leave at three a.m. and. Um, so they'd pack up the car, and people think actually that we would go to bed and get up at three, but no, they never went to bed. We just spent like four hours packing for a two day trip and then get in the car at 3 a.m. and they would drive, and I just remember, I didn't always know where we were going, it didn't matter. And we they'd get down to Virginia somewhere on Route 11 and they'd see, oh, that'd be a good place to stop. There'd be a wayside with a picnic table and they'd um, pull over and we'd sleep till dawn and <laughs> then mom would get up and make breakfast and uh, we'd get back in the car for which I thought we were gonna you know, spend a lot of time getting to where it was we were going and it was like an hour and a half away where it was. <laughs> so I don't know why they chose to break up the trip like that but um, I think they enjoyed the adventure of uh, just being out and having breakfast early in the morning by the side of the road. Um, but it was sure fun for me, and uh, so anyway, this song is just a little bit about that sort of nostalgicness. It's called "Back in the Backseat Again." Soft dash will glow. Shadows in the front so familiar to me. There's a world out. 
outside my window to see Trucks passing by, who knows what they're seeing Billboards and power lines and faraway dreams That sweep over me as I'm closing my eyes
do one more tune and then we're gonna take a little break so that y'all can eat some watermelon. And uh, I know that there's lots of watermelon out there. I wanna tell you that uh, we do have some, some stuff back there at the table. Um, ben has a new CD, uh, a couple of CDs there featuring his brand new, all original uh, music of his own uh, composition and, and uh, produced by Chris Eldridge. Um, Tristan has CD and with uh, all original music from a duo, a duo that he has called Scroggins and Rose. He also has, for those of you who are looking for new music for your cassette players, <laughs> he has new music never before heard for a cassette player. And um, I've got the, the Royal Traveler CD back there. And we also have t-shirts and I don't see them up here right now, but we have um, a, a, a Beautiful logo with Mr. Rains and Allegheny. It's, it's in uh, formal black in case you want to wear it just anywhere. And oh, look at that. That's amazing. And, uh, and we have that, and we have all sizes with the, with the uh, Mr. Rains and Allegheny shirt. We have, um, um, uh, and we also have it in the cap sleeve. So it's it sort of like a, 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 um, a trimmer cut. And, um, <laughs> Good catch, man. <laughs> so that's this one, and um, and that's this. It's it's very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have lots of sizes. Um, and then we also have this shirt over here, which is. Uh, it's it's a ba it's basically a drawing of this space, but I like to tell the story because it really does have a story. My husband Ben, who just threw the t-shirts at us and is doing our sound, decided we need to have a picture of the base, but we need to cut it open to see what's inside. Because because you know good things live inside of musical instruments, and do you know there were kittens inside this base, <laughs> and kittens just dying to be represented on a t-shirt and. There were stars and candy and birds and roller skates and <laughs> kittens and lots of things that just make you feel good. So that's what that shirt is all about. So anyway, we've got that um, over there, so we hope you And we have free stickers, and also we have some really, really beautiful stickers that, that go with... <laughs> they're quite nice. <laughs> they're quite nice that go with Ben's uh, new project as well. Quite, they're not free. They're not free. They're not free. They're very nice they're, stickers. Again. Quite nice. It's a nice sticker. My, my stickers are very nice too. They're <laughs> free. Um, but anyway. You can tell that this has been a topic of discussion for the last two weeks. Ben brought a lot of them, and we don't want to take them all home. So. That's right. That's right. Anyway, before we go on, I have to introduce you to the fellow who's, who really holds us all together in so many ways. And he is playing the five string banjo. He comes from Portland, Maine. Actually, technically Yarmouth, Maine, but um, it's very close. And <laughs> please make welcome Eli Gilbert on the band. <laughs>
opportunity to say that uh, none of us are texting on stage. It just looks like it a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of technology that we're using, and we control a lot of it with our phones, which is great. It just has the negative consequence of making it look like we're texting all the time. We're just having a really important conversation <laughs> amongst ourselves. We're going to do a song now. This is a nice, I mean, it's kind of nice. <laughs> it's sad. Uh, it's sort of a love song. Um, my kind of love song. Very passive aggressive. <laughs> I'll get by.
with me in church. Well, you are in church, Oh, Tristan. that's why. <laughs> this next song is uh, one that's on the new album as well. And uh, uh, like I said, it's going to be out February 9th, which means that um, that's right around the corner. And uh, it also means that Christmas is right around the corner. So uh, Tristan also has a book back there. Well, some of you saw, I'm sure, the, the book that says uh, How to Learn to Play Mandolin in 14 Days. And uh, you can play just like this. <laughs> but he also has a mandolin book for, with Christmas songs. Right? Yeah. You know, don't be, you've been here every single year. It's December, everyone wants you to play some Christmas songs on the mandolin. You don't have time to learn them. You have to start now <laughs> so you're ready by December. This is what I'm saying. This and is a universal experience. That it happens every year, I assume to everyone. <laughs> and you can fix this problem. Uh, I created a solution. Yeah, marketing, nice. But it also means that um, hopefully uh, we're gonna be, well we will be, we, uh, we'll be traveling back up this general way uh, in, in, starting in February, March, and April and uh, um, with touring the new album. So we hope that you'll stay tuned to uh, uh, our doings. And the, one of the easiest ways to do that is to follow us on social media. Um, we just, uh, the, these guys just finally talked me into uh, starting our own band Instagram, Missy Rains and Allegheny. And uh, if you've been, if you've seen it, uh, there are a lot of cats in it. <laughs> yes, today we had a picture of five cats eating watermelon. <laughs> to represent this gig. Yes. Um, the cats were us. They were us. Right, it was a matter of work. I think they got that. We're not really cats. It's a metaphor. <laughs> I'm not really sure about that, but anyway. Um, uh, but yeah, you can follow us on social media. And when I say follow, it would, it's always awesome if you can actually hit that uh, follow button not just uh, sort of, uh, because it really actually makes a difference for us. These times are changing, folks, and uh, the days when, um, you know, uh, cars were built with CD players in them uh, are gone. And uh, so uh, it, there's a whole, all sorts of different metrics to, uh, that people use to uh, just, you know, tell whether or not you're actually gaining ground. And uh, one of those places is actually social media. So we appreciate it if you want to see what we're up to and, and uh, follow us along and post and tag us whenever you feel up to it. And as cats or humans, we don't <laughs> care. <laughs> so anyway, here's one called, I Would Be a Blackbird. <laughs>
during the pandemic, uh, I spent a lot of time, like many of you, uh, at home and uh, sort of wondering, trying to figure out what was going to happen next. It was very, very, very uh, 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 difficult time. And I had spent time sitting in my office and looking out the window. And I remember particularly, because it traveled on, like I, I didn't work for like a year. And so um, into the winter, I'm still looking out the window of my office and trying to write and trying to, trying to figure out stuff. And there was a bird that kept coming to the, to the window. It was a little, little red bird. And uh, we uh, sort of, uh, I found myself looking for that bird every day. It was the same bird. Don't try to tell me it wasn't the same bird. And I uh, found him finding me just as curious as I found him. And, uh, but the, uh, uh, it started making me think about uh, I started looking at the yard a little differently for a little while and uh, finding beauty where I hadn't seen before and then sort of finding things that I needed to do and, <laughs> and all of those things. But I just was changing. It was, it was uh, what, observing myself, uh, observing things differently. And um, so I started writing a song and, and realized that uh, one of the greatest gifts that I had was uh, 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 somebody that I could always look to to uh, get me through and uh, the, this uh, thing we call life and uh, so I ended up writing this song um, about my beloved who's back there doing the sound we've been married um, 30 um, six. Six, six years <laughs> 36 years <laughs> and uh, today is his birthday Like a waterfall, like a record. 
plugging in. You're back against the wind. Red fights the gray. Out on that limb, no Actually, the last track. Uh, so, those of you, <laughs> this is my seminar. Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so Tony Rice, you know, obviously a very influential guitar player, very important musician in our music, bluegrass music, and um, he made a solo album called Church Street Blues in the early '80s, and it, uh, yeah, kind of changed the game for like solo bluegrass guitar, and it, it really defined a lot of things and opened up a lot of doors for acoustic guitar players in general. Uh, the part what's so great about that album is that he uh, kind of uh, put together all these songs from different songwriters from all different styles and truly made them his own. And it's just incredible. Um, and so the, anyway, this was the, this was, or sorry, is the last track, <laughs> is and was the last track. Um, it depends on what um, medium of the CD you have. If you have a, the actual CD, it is the last track, but if you uh, stream the album on streaming services, it is actually not the last track. So, depending on who you asked, or if, you know, your authenticity meter might determine one way or the other. But, that aside, uh, we're gonna play it for you now. What's it called? What is it? It's called The Pride of Man. <laughs> Broken in the dust again. Oh God, the pride man, broken in the dust again. 
song that came to me after a couple of months of being at home and digging, taking out my frustrations, my fear, and my hopes and dreams in my yard, digging in the dirt and planting things and uh, uh, trying to just find solace in, with my hands in the dirt. This one called Digging Up the Weeds. Sunlight can 
I wrote uh, with a, a great songwriter down in Maryland by the name of Randy Barrett. And it's uh, uh, basically, it's, it's um, kind of about the, it is about the devastation of the, the opioid epidemic, particularly how it affected the state of West Virginia and how the state of West Virginia um, and the surrounding states uh, were uh, targeted specifically um, because of because of a lot of things, the, the rural isolation, the kind of labor force that's mostly found in those parts of Appalachia. And um, uh, so it was kind of a very ripe uh, place to target uh, selling painkillers. And so anyway, uh, this is a, just a happy little ditty about that. <laughs> but it sounds happier than it is, kind of. That's the bluegrass way. It is. <laughs> it is. This is the way. But anyway, uh, we've, we've suffered. Uh, West Virginia has suffered at the hands of the coal mining companies back in the early 1900s. Uh, uh, but uh, it turns out that wasn't the worst thing that was going to happen to the state. It's called Who Needs a Mine. <laughs> we 
Neil Dickens song. She's one of my favorite songwriters. And this one's a little different than the other one. It's about uh, when you're in a bad relationship and you decide that you're fed up and you're not gonna take it anymore. <laughs> but this one's in a different key. <laughs> it's called, uh, You'll Get No More of Me. <laughs>
going to go off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll end with one more uh, tune, uh, kind of slightly diff different, uh, a, a little turn left from, from bluegrass with a little bit of a, a jazz feel. And uh, thanks again. Uh, definitely uh, encourage you to come out to see Mark Schatz and, and Brian McDowell yeah. uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, um, Mark's been a, a hero of mine for years, and um, he's also nominated for Bass Player of the Year this year from the IBMA, and he's uh, won it uh, at least a couple of times. And, um, um, and Brian McDowell is actually one of the most amazing musicians you'll ever come across. Um, I got to, to play, Mark Schatz also plays banjo and uh, writes songs and sings and dances and does everything. But um, he had a little tour a few years ago and a, with a record of his and I actually got to play bass for him. And uh, it was um, much like driving the race car for Richard Petty or something. <laughs> it was very, very disturbing for me, but a lot of fun.